Well, hello everyone. Um, we're making a possum skin cloak today. Um, so we've got some possum skins that we bought from Tasmania. Um, sometimes we buy them from New Zealand. Uh, but our old people used to um, do it themselves. They used to get up the, the tree. They would often they would um, go to a tree where they could see a, a hole where there was a where there were possums in there. Uh, they would they would make toe holds with a with a stone axe, and they would walk their way up to that that little hole which was the, the home of the possum. Um, they would make a, a small gathering of uh, of bark and kindling and stuff that would smoulder. Um, they'd take that up with them, and they would put carefully put that into the into the, the hole, which would then start smouldering and the possum. The possum or possums would start coming out and you'd grab hold of the possums and, and wring their necks um, and then you had a possum. Of course you'd eat the possum, um, you would skin it and tan it, um, not, uh, yeah, uh, skin it and tan it, uh, also we would eat the, the possum it's, itself. Um, often we use the, the bottom half, half of a jaw as a as a possum tooth uh, engraver, uh, often use that um, not for the not so much for the possum skins itself, but to engrave uh, wood to carve carve notches out of wood to create design and and symbols and story. Um, <clears throat> what we have here is, as I said just before, a whole lot of possum skins that um, that we bought from Tassie. Uh, what we've done here is we've we've bobby pinned them together and we've topped and tailed them. So there's a there's a tail one end uh, and then there's a head the other end. Um, we've put them in bobby pins. I've I've just sort of uh, cut them a little bit to to match them up from side to side. When I get to start sewing them, I'll actually um, clean them up a bit more, make them a bit straighter. Uh, then I start sewing them up. Um, so um, we use um, we use a, a, a lace twine. It's like a sailor's twine. Um, our old people used kangaroo sinew. So the the sinew that um, the great long sinews that in the in the kangaroo's leg and tail, they would take that out um, before they would cook cook it. Um, cook it and eat it. They would um, dry that out, and then once it was dried out, they could split it into really, really fine, um, fine thread. Um, either then put it in water or put it in your mouth and make it supple again. They would sew with it. Um, they would do a, a running stitch. What you see here is a blanket stitch. So you'll you'll see it in a minute. I'll start doing some. Uh, continue doing some sewing um, but uh, yeah so essentially we're using a, uh, a blanket stitch today so you've you've got that little rib across the, the top here which is a, really the hallmark of a, a blanket stitch our run the stitch was just a stitch that went through and through back through and back through and back through um, and there was no no um, bead across the top um, across the top of it so um we'll put that so there you go we'll just um just put out there you can see the possum skins there one's a as i said one's a one's a top the head and tail so then there's a head and tail there so i've done them just intermediate so that they they match up um and you get more out of the skin that way when you're when you're um sewing it so uh, well let's just put it out again so that's what it looks like roughly when we have put it together, um, ready for sewing. Okay, so that's what it looks like there, ready for sewing. That one's started. Alright, so that one's started. And then this one has been completed. So this is one of the rows. Um, so you can see that's one row 
and it's completed. Um, that one's yet to be done. There were four rows of, of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven skins. So in this case, these skins are really big, the biggest skins I've had. Uh, I've done a few possum skin cloaks and uh, yeah, these are quite big. Um, I'm really impressed with um, these ones. The ones in New Zealand, are, they're good skins, but they're often they're, they're very long, but they're very thin. These ones are long, but they're really thick. So they're um, in really good nick, these, the possums. Um, and they're probably just common brushies, um, brush tail possums. Yeah, so that's how that looks. Um, and the other one looks. We'll just go back to this now. I've, I've been, so I'm about to start another row of here. So I've got, got these here. Well, and as you can see, I've been been sewing these ones one by one. And now, what I will do is I'll go turn that around. Alright, come back to this side. Um, and you see how that's rough, rough there. Um, what we'll do is we'll so we'll match it up there. See that one's already been cut. See I've, I've cut it. I've cut it a bit to sort of square it off. Um, I'll do that again here and and match them up and then I'll start. And then what I do here is I get myself a length of that that there. Uh, about this wide. Across my arm's length. Um, on the end all we do is all we do is do this, put one knot, one knot like that, um, another knot over that, um, put that together, tighten it up, and that'll be the anchor point. So when I put it through, that'll be the, the anchor point at which we go. Um, you can see here I've just cut both of those skins. As I said before, one's a top and one's a tail. And then on the other side, there's a top and then there's a tail on this side. All right? So you top and tail them. Um, a bit like top and tail them when you're putting kids in a, little kids in a bed. Put one at the top and one at the tail and they're fine. All right, so what I'm doing there is just getting me, me start point. I'm just measuring up my skin, making sure I've got it around about the right right spot um hang on that for a sec here's me me twine it's me needle the sailor's needle you see that needle it's you see how it's it's not straight it's it's got three sides to it You can sort of see it. Yeah. Okay. So now what I'll do is I'll just put me the end bit in there. Um, I don't tie it off or anything. I'll just keep it like that. And then... So what I'll do here is I'll try and fold all this, all this fur back in. So it's all back in there before we start putting a pin in it. The start sewing it. Uh, just put that through there. Pull it through, and you've got your anchor point. All right. Then again, pinch pinch the skins together with your fingers, and see how I'm just pushing that fur back in. And we come over here and go like that. Now this is the secret to the blanket stitch. So you just pull it through. Pull it through like that. Right. Then you bring it back through there. 
go through there and lock it off and you'll see you'll see it properly in a minute that's just the that's just the first one so then what we do again is we push all that back in pinch it together and in there like that Right, so pull it through. All right, leave a little loop so you can bring bring your needle back through. All right, so you bring it back through there, bring it back through there, and there's your blanket stitch. So you just keep doing that. So see that? See how see how it's locked off? One locks off the next one, and you just keep doing that. The the the, the next one is locked locked off. So you keep your, your stitches so stay tight, um, and so, as I said, you bring it back through there, all through there, and it, see it pulls them back together, and it keeps that previous one tight as well. So every time you go one forward, it, it tightens off the, the one previous, so then you have a really nice, consistent, um, as you can see here, um, you can see a nice, tight, even stitch. And that is how you do this. So we'll, um, um, I'll, I'll keep stitching this and um, we'll um, show you some more um, of the joining of the, um, the possum, possum skins to eventually make the, the whole cloak. Uh, and... It's just uh, sit and have a yarn, uh, have a talk. Um, I'm uh, I'm doing this with my my older son Mitchell. He's helped me out, so we'll um, we'll take some video of him shortly and show his uh, his beautiful face, ugly face, whatever it might be. Anyway, um, we'll see you soon. All right. Um, so now we've um, sewn each of the four rows together now what we're going to do is we're going to as I said earlier on um, how we had the tails topped and tailed them now we're going to cut each line here as best we can and cut the line there on the other one and then try and match them up then we'll sew them up we'll do that same with the other one and then we get once we get that done we will so the middle, put the, the put the two sections together, and and so the middle middle part together, and then we'll have a cloak, and then we'll be ready for putting um, burning and burning design and um, putting um, putting some ochre design as well in it, um, and uh, yeah, so that's where we're at at the moment. So if we just what I'll do is I'll just cut these tails off first, trim them back, and these excess bits here. That one. As you see, I'm just trying to create a straight line, as best straight line. They're not too straight at the moment, but I'm just cutting most of the excess off so that we can see what I've got, and then I'll just clean it up a bit afterwards. As you can see, we've left, left some of the 
twine behind so that we can tidy up. one so you can see how that's a bit jaggedy I'll just clean that all up as I go and we'll create a nice straight line we'll do it on the on the other side and then um, then we'll start sewing it together we'll do that for both of them and um, so that'll take us a little bit of time so Mm, all right. Let me go around the other way. Yeah. There we go. We have one reasonably straight line there. And then we'll try and match the other one as best we can to that. And with that little bit of a a little bit of a sort of roundish straight line, I'll match it up on the other side. So that we're not losing heaps and heaps of um, our skin. All good. All right. All right. Alright. So that's the only bit there. I'm gonna probably have to add a little bit in there. So if I cut that bugger there. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, see how it matches up. How's that looking? Not looking too bad.
There we go. It's not bad. So there we go, we'll sew it together. And we'll repeat that on the other side. Okay, uh, here we are. This is uh, the final um, stitch. Um, I've started already. Um, this is the stitch that goes all the way down the centre, um, uh, completing the two halves. Um, once I've stitched this all together, um, then we'll begin to um, we'll begin to do the uh, the design work on it. But um, so there it is. Yeah, there's in its roughest roughest form. Once I've got that all stitched together, we'll clean up a few bits and pieces around that um, that don't quite fit real well. Um, some little little gaps and stuff. We'll fix the gaps up, um, stitch them up, and um, then we'll be ready to put the design on. Um, the design will be based on a an Aboriginal person from from a child um, to an elder. Um, so that's what we're going to do. Yeah, so I'll just keep keep sewing this together until I get to the end, I suppose. Um, that's the plan. Um, hope you understand the, the process. Um, Hope you also can connect all the, the different parts together um, through watching this little short video. Um, yeah, and um, then you can understand the, the making of it and the story of it. Um, yeah, so um, here we go. I'll show you, I'll show you this some um, fibre. Um, there's a bit of fibre that's come off the possum skin. A bit of a, it's a bit of that. So what our old people used to do, we've done it a few times. Um, make they make hair belts, and so what they do is they tie the, they use that short fibre with um, some human hair and they roll it on their thighs uh, to mat it up, to make it like a, like a matting uh, or, or like a dreadlock type thing and then make hair belts out of them. So something to go around your waist and then something down to, to protect your private parts. Um, yeah. So um, we'll, we, keep the, uh, we keep the fur and um, we use the fur for making our belts for when we do dancing and 
singing and dancing and stuff. Um, so we can look deadly. Um, that's the plan anyway. Okay, um, we've put the the um, the cloak together. I've started doing a little bit of burning at the beginning here. Um, we talked about how this would represent a person from when they're born to um, becoming an elder. And so, if you look at these drawings here, which I'm going to try and put back onto the put onto the cloak, um, this is the child here. Um, these are elders, and each of these panels represents something different. Each of these panels, so I'll try to um, correlate these exactly onto the, the cloak, um, and then there'll be a, I'll have a, um, a little table to tell you exactly what, what part means what. Um, and in the meantime, um, we'll um, keep burning and um, and then um, once we finish doing all the burning, the burning outline, we'll start putting some ochre inside the inside it as well, just to give it a little bit more um, pizzazz. Yeah, all right. Well, I'll continue to work then. What we're doing here is just burning it. Just burning the outline here. For this second, this little second section here. Bit of colouring in. And that's about all there is to it. You just gradually I'll continue to do this until I've got the whole outline. Then once I've got all the whole outline of each of those panels. I'll come back with some different ochres, different reds and and yellows, and um, even sort of um, orange, orangey type colours, purpley type colours, um, ochres, and um, as I said, I'll fill it in and make it look nice. And hopefully we can get to you very soon. Um, um, my son and I will then edit all the, the footage that I've got here. Um, and we'll try and make a, um, a bit of a story for you. So that you've got that, uh, the story recorded um, as, a, as a, video for, a, a video file. And um, you'll be able to explain to all, all your mob that come to you to come to your place, and um, you'll be able to explain to them what the the cloak's about. Um, whether it be just the mob or the dignitaries or whoever, the elders, you know, um, you'll be able to share the story with them. There's one of those sections, that first section finished. Alright, well, I'll best keep going. This section here, from memory, I think it represents our ancestors. which we're nothing without our ancestors.
Um, okay, we've uh, put the possum skin cloak together. Um, we've now burnt all the design work on it. So I'm now going to explain just a little bit about um, what they are and what we're going to do with them. So this middle one here is the, the child or the baby. The second one here is our ancestors. The third one here is them gathering knowledge. Um, the fourth one is learning how they belong and their relationships to um, to other people and the rest of their country. Um, uh, number hang on, one, two, three, four, five. Number five is becoming a man or a woman. Um, it's supposed to um, uh, encompass both those things. Next one is bunjil. And the next one is wa. Okay, so it's six and seven. Number eight and nine are the rites of passage. So those people um, going from being boys or girls to men or women. Um, so then there's number ten, the stories of the Kulin. Eleven represents Kulin country. Twelve and thirteen is about story holders, about our different story hold people that hold stories and you know look after them and um, teach everyone um, the correct way the um, the correct way they should understand the stories. Um, the next one is uh, fourteen and fifteen is women's business, and then the next one after that is these two here. 16 and 17, they're actually men's business. So I've encompassed both all the things from both a, a, a man and a woman's perspective. Um, well, it's not telling personal stories of any description. Um, just make it very general from a child to young young man or young woman. There are all these empty panels you see here, um, all around the rest of it. I'm going to fill those with just different coloured ochres because I think um, telling a story is about, um, I mean, telling about all the bits and bits and pieces of a, a person's story, but these other things are, in particular, um, you would think that that person would tell their own story in a particular way. They would live their lives in a particular way and, and become um, their own person in their own right, even though they would have... Um, different um, different um, clan groups they would be um, connected to, um, different stories that they may um, they may know, um, even learn to hold those stories and tell those stories to the rest of the mob. So we're about to... Um, I, uh, so if we just come out here for a minute, I'll go on, I'll tell you a little bit about what we're going to do now. So... What we're going to do now is we've got a heap of oak out here um, that we've we've ground up. This is a yellowy, a yellowy coloured um, ochre. Um, we have some some greyish coloured there, grey coloured one. We have a couple of different reds, um, red colours, um, and we'll be using these different colours to. Uh, to put on the pelt, the, on the skin, and the foster skin, and the bulgra. Um, this here is a solution that is uh, a mixture of wattle sap and water. You put the wattles, the dried wattle sap in there and you let it, put water over it and you let it dissolve and mix together. And it's a really good binding agent um, for the ochre. Um, the ochre to the, this solution and then onto the skin and it helps it to bind to the fix to the skin so that's what we're about to start doing um, and hopefully we'll be finished very soon Hello. Right
Uh, hello everybody, um, this is uh, Mick Harding from Dancing Wombat. I've been commissioned to do this possum skin cloak for you guys to, at uh, Nam Anem Ma Jambana. Um, this cloak represents a, uh, a person um, and the things they go through their life from from childhood to um, to you know possibly becoming an elder. Um, so here we go. Um, so that first one you can see right where I focused on here is a is a shield, and that represents um, the young young bubup, the young baby, um, which could be a young young boy or young girl. Uh, the next one. This, which I've focused on here is represents our ancestors. So those diamonds um, represent our ancestors. The next one, it represents uh, that young person gathering knowledge, um, gathering knowledge, seeking knowledge, receiving knowledge um, from their mothers and fathers, uncles and aunties, brothers and sisters, their elders. Um, yeah, so that's that one there. This next one, it really, it uh, it uh, is about them learning uh, about how they belong to a particular group or the and or the bigger larger group and what their relationships are to to um, both people and their country. The next one, it represents becoming a man. Or a woman, so they go from either a young, uh, a young girl or young boy, um, and then they become um, young men or women. The next one, it represents Bunjil, Bunjil the wedge tail eagle. So the Kulin understand we understand Bunjil to be our creator, created the earth and everything in and on it, um, and then went to the heavens. Um, so that's Bunjil. He's also um, one of our totem heads. So Bunjil is one of the totems. And that brings me to Wa. Wa the crow. Wa the crow is also a totem head. So you've got either Bunjil or Wa totems in our clans. So they're the two, they're the two totems. Then the next one, next two, I should say. The next two... Um, represent uh, rites of passage. So as I said before about that, that section that talked about them becoming um, young men, young women, um, they also would learn what that really means over time. It would be not just a, um, a one-off thing, it would be something they would continue to learn as time went by. Okay, so then... We move to the next one, and the next one is about um, the stories of the Kulin. So we all have um, particular stories that are either um, exclusive or inter interconnected to um, other uh, other Kulin people in the bigger, broader group. Um, the next one, as you can see, is all these chevrons. Um, it's a symbol that's you know, used very commonly amongst Kulin people, and that represents Kulin country. The, uh, then it brings me on to the next two. So this one here, and this one here, is a, they're both about story holders. So um, in our groups, um, we will have people that are story holders. They hold the stories. Um, they know the songs and dances to them. They know where, where, they, uh, where they reside, um, who they are, how, how they are to share that with the rest of the group, how, they are, how the rest of the group are to participate in it. Um, and so they're the ones that are responsible for that. The next two, this one and that one, 
Uh, this one's about women's business. Okay, so whilst I'm not trying to um, tell you about particular uh, specifics in regards to women's business, um, I'm just trying to represent that as being a port, uh, important part of um, our cultural uh, cultural rights. Um, the next the next two um, represent men's business. Again, the same. Um, and I might, I might just add that um, in regards to uh, whether it's women's business or it's men's business, both women and men play minor or specific parts in, in some of those things that will be really particular and really um, uh, to do with whatever the particular business is about. Um, and those communities would know exactly um, what involvement um, but both men or women um, and how they participate in these things called men's business and women's business. Now, um, I just want to move on. If you can see, I'll just turn it this way. And if you can see all those other um, panels that... Um, that were that are um, that are empty, and they've just got colour in them. Now, um, as you can probably make out, it's a concentric circle, and going from birth through to different stages in your life. And I put these other panels in just to represent an individual, and and I didn't fill them in other than just put some colour in them. So I think that um, really importantly that the person be it a, a man or a woman, would actually feel this in themselves and they would start to tell their own story and possibly how they're connected to their country. Um, you know, potentially, you know, you know, who they are, you know, in really specifically about who they are. And so that's why I've done, done that on it. And um, really pleased to see that it's, um, it's turned out really nice. Um, I hope that um, the name Ma Jambana Mob, I hope you uh, enjoy this, um, this cloak and get um, many years of sharing and um, uh, sharing with your community and, um, and at, um, doing some things for you that really, really matter um, culturally. So thanks for allowing me to do this for you. Um, or, um, or should I say, Mungajin, which means thank you in our language. And, um, yeah, um, uh, that's all. Um, okay, bye.